Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of Down to Business. Uh, today, we're talking all things artificial intelligence or AI, you know, business intelligence, automation, with uh, with an absolute whiz I've got me today. He's a, he's a 20-year veteran in software development, uh, business transformation specialist. I'll get him to explain what that is rather than me. Um, you know, father of three kids. He's, he's just like you and I, husband, great soccer coach, I hear. But today from uh, from Vinet, I've got Will Haywood joining me. Welcome, Will. Hey, Andrew. How are you doing? Mate, talk to me a bit more about uh, your background. I mean, explain what what does that mean with a business transformation specialist? It's a it's a it's a funky title. Uh, but talk to me about you know how you've ended up to this point where you are now, and and maybe you know along that journey how you work with business owners. Yeah, sure. Um, just uh, from yeah background perspective, I guess. Um, we're kind of being a software developer for such a long time, kind of talking about software developments kind of almost transformed into that's just like a, another tool in our toolkit for kind of uh, delivering uh, change into a business, um, especially kind of like positive change around kind of process transformation. So I guess taking that software de- development background, um, we didn't want to be locked into a box to go, we only go into dark rooms and write code that nobody knows about anymore. It was more about... Um, all these businesses kind of had these problems, whether they be from like a process management standpoint or an efficiency management standpoint or kind of reporting and kind of accuracy around that. So it's taking kind of our software development backgrounds as well as kind of more recently, uh, we might not write a lot of code for particular solutions, whether it be kind of using um, more like software robots or what we call uh, kind of uh, like I guess, visual automation tools and things like that to kind of build workflows just by kind of dragging and dropping things together. And we kind of take all of our, our software engineering skills and kind of transpose that into like this, this modern kind of environment. So I guess, yeah, putting us into that software development box didn't really fit what we were doing anymore. So that, I mean, by transformation, it's basically, you know, if I think innovation, it's doing things better, but using technology to, you know, really improve a, I guess the state of play for businesses and, and business owners. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of a lot of things that we would be doing, um, I guess kind of you could uh, put into a bucket of saying, uh, so business process automation is, is a, a nice easy easy bucket of kind of uh, approach to how we, we look at automation. So even things like digital forms and workflows is a very easy entry, and, um, entry point to that kind of stuff to go, hey, things that you might be, you might have still have people filling in timesheets or pieces of paper and kind of handing that off for kind of scanning and things like that. There's still a lot of businesses out there that do that stuff. Um, and so there's a lot of different approaches to kind of go, hey, like what it, what's the actual kind of human cost and wage cost uh, to kind of do that going forwards? Mm. And is there a better, better way of doing that? And kind of going, we don't necessarily need to have people doing that anymore. Let's have them do more valuable work. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll come back to some of the specifics in a minute, but I, I think from what you're saying and even in explaining your title, there's a lot to be said about um, awareness and education. You know, uh, I think, you know, I mean, I'm a business owner from a point of view of you don't know what you don't know. Um, so I guess it's even challenging how we do things and why we do things and, and educating people is a better way. So I guess starting that education process, I mean, we hear – you know, artificial intelligence so much or AI and then these yep. supercomputers and blah, blah, blah. Like, there's a lot out there. Uh, and and I, I guess on your journey from when you started 20 years ago to now, you would just see the the sheer, uh, I guess, multiplier of information that's out there. But starting with that education process, what is AI at its core? Uh, that's a hard question. Um, AI can be a lot of, lot of different things. Uh, <laughs> I guess... Um, yeah, I'm not a data scientist, uh, so kind of like the actual nitty gritty, but part of it is is probably a little bit beyond me. But, but um, for the, for yeah, the as far as yeah, like focused on kind of like what can it mean to kind of you in a in a day to day situation in your business? How is it going to like make what I do day to day easier? And so I think that's probably like the easiest way that you can approach that is looking at kind of what's on the market, what's like actually legitimately good to use. And so we all know about uh, chat GPT at the moment, kind of hit the market like almost two years ago at this point, and has really kind of transformed kind of a lot of the, uh, like the way that we approach uh, uh, like just writing things, I guess. So um, it's, it's a, it's a large language model, I guess you could say, if you want to put it into an AI bucket, but what is it good at? It's good at writing content. Um, 
which kind of, yeah, can really help us accelerate through um, like some of the the really kind of, I guess, like tough slogs of, of kind of getting content into into documents, whether that be kind of, yeah, for internal use in your business or for external use. Uh, there's also, uh, so there's like that, that one's a big one. Um, and that also kind of translates into some, some, some other genuine use cases, things like assistive technologies uh, for kind of software development. And that's the stuff that we might use day to day. So Microsoft has a product called Copilot, um, mm, which kind of started... You. Yeah, started started out kind of in the software development space and kind of we have it integrated into all, all of our kind of software development tools. And what it helps us do is to kind of make intelligent suggestions about what you might want to do. So you can kind of give it prompts to go, I want to uh, yeah, move move A to B and it's going to kind of yeah, give you some suggestions on how you might do that. Um, and that's been like, I guess, I would call it a force multiplier or kind of a time to success it kind of really kind of can reduce that. So where, whereas before people might be hitting Google or something like that to kind of solve their problems, um, if you can, if you go as um, into GPT and kind of throw your problems at it, see what comes out, definitely approach that with a big kind of level of distrust and kind of make sure that you need to validate the answers kind of coming back out of it is, is a big part of that. But if you use it appropriately, it can definitely reduce the amount of time you spent researching or trying to solve a problem that you're not really aware of how to solve initially so that, that's a huge part of, of kind of what gpt is doing for us at the moment yeah, sure. um, and then yeah and then more recently microsoft kind of rolled that into a whole bunch into their whole product suite um, and that's really new i think we kind of saw that release only a couple of months ago and so that's in uh like excel and word and in microsoft 365 technologies as well like sharepoint and teams so um, all of those do different things um, and we're kind of really just starting to see what that can do at the moment but in, in things like excel it can do really intelligent kind of um, generation of reports or interpreting data and, and trying to like pull things out of data sets that you might not necessarily be able to kind of see yourself. Um, so that's, again, like still in the very early days and, and kind of sometimes might not be that good, but yeah, we'll see. Well, I, I guess on that, I think buy beware sort of thing, like mm. as you said, chat GPT, I've read a few things on, you know, at the end of the day, it's great for writing content, but the original content still input has been input by people. So you still need to check what, what the output is, I guess. So it's effectively, mm. it's a way of... Um, you know, not recreating the wheel, but, you know, there's still need to be some sort of quality control. So I guess from a business owner's point of view, depending on what um, what your market is, what your industry is, what your output is, what your risk levels are, there needs to be a level of quality assurance. Yep. Second of all, I think things like this co-pilot, like, I mean, I agree with you. It, 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 it's, I've seen it and I've seen the very, very tip of it. But how does someone get their head around this? Like, as I said, this has just been a, a whole new functionality to what anyone's to be yeah. used to. Um, and how do you actually get up to speed? Like, it's got all this capability, but if you don't know how to use the capability. Yeah, I think kind of, um, again, like, it's very early space at the moment, but we have seen kind of a bit of a proliferation of kind of consultants working in this space who kind of probably just know a little bit more about it than the rest of us and then who have probably used those those tools um, kind of to solve problems a little bit more than what the rest of us have um, and kind of engage, potentially kind of engaging some of those people to uh, come and kind of do some pilots within your business to go, hey, like where 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 can this technology help my business, whether it's kind of in, in report writing or quote writing or content writing or, or kind of other assistive things within kind of Microsoft suite or kind of outside of that as well. Um, I think kind of trying to identify like some of those locations in your business where that force multiplier can kind of come into play um, is probably the first part. But I think definitely kind of doing that uh, process of uh, approaching it with caution and, and being knowing that the people that are going to use that te technology are clever enough to kind of validate that the output is is true and accurate. Um, like we've seen some some pretty big use cases where like uh, I think a bank in the, in the United States um, used uh, GPT as a, a chatbot and kind of suggested to a client that uh, this was kind of a particular uh, way that they could repay um, a debt. Um, and that was not actually true, but they were kind of made to the, the kind of court system kind of landed with the GPT was kind of owned by that business and the business had to kind of comply with that. So, um, yeah, caution. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, it, look, it's a good point. I guess... Um... And we could talk about just that 
you know, that aspect all day, I guess. But if I, I move to then considering just general technology, you know, um, you would have seen some change in your time and not trying to make you uh, to be an old duck, mate. But, you know, in 20 years in, in the tech space, a year can be a long time. So in 20, I imagine you've seen, uh, you know, some great advancements in technology, but not only advancements, you've seen the cost of delivering or accessing reduce significantly. Um, comment yeah. a bit on that, but also why business owners, you know, realistically have no choice. They have to adopt if they want to be successful. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole bunch of kind of uh, approaches to that, but um, like one one kind of big change that we've seen. So a big product that kind of we use uh, day to day and what we kind of uh, roll out to to our clients is is Microsoft SharePoint, which is a bit of a, a kind of a content management platform, which people can use commonly for kind of intranets, uh, knowledge management, document management. Um, people kind of get it as part of their Microsoft 365 subscription these days. So they kind of have it there and they usually they might not use it or they might just scratch the surface of it. Back when we started, um, so I started using SharePoint in around 2009, and when we did that, a SharePoint rollout was kind of very much uh, in the enterprise space only. It would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to kind of build, like get all the hardware and server requirements that you needed. The the license costing alone for, sh for SharePoint was in like the 50, 60, 70, 100K mark kind of thing um, back, back, in, back then. But now kind of every small business that's paying three to thirty dollars uh per user per month for their kind of licensing to into microsoft into 365 they just have this and the product's infinitely better than what it was kind of 15 mm. years ago as well so um that's that's a huge one i think and all of the tool set that kind of comes along with that um and it's that times every other product that we use as well um so even things like kind of uh like digital forms and workflows used to be like moderately kind of complicated to use depending on, on kind of what you wanted to do but but these days, like a lot of the solution, a lot of the solutions that we are delivering to our clients are purposely built for kind of where we're, we're not kind of building that stuff to kind of own it ourselves and, and, and support it kind of going forwards. We're just kind of giving them a bit of a kickstart to go, hey, here's a good way to build forms and here's a good way to build workflows. But ultimately, these these are kind of what we call a no code or low code solution. It's uh, they shouldn't be very complicated. And so we're going to hand it back to them and they can own it and they can like start building their own uh, solutions going forwards. Mm. So effectively, in a lot of the role you play is like either as a consultant or, um, you know, doing a project for clients to make their life better. But, um, you know, it's multi-pronged, I guess, in, in how you work with people. Yeah, definitely. So some of our solutions are like can be like fairly big software development solutions that have your big integration things and and do require a lot of that kind of code and management stuff that we've we've, we've been doing forever. But yeah, I'd say the equal amount of our our kind of stuff that we're doing these days is is very much more in that enablement piece to go, like we're not here to kind of yeah take take some uh, take a Stacey Shaw mechanism to go. We're not here to tell you how to suck eggs. We're gonna we're going to just show you the pathway and then then you can kind of pick it up from there and and kind of uh, take take it where where you think that your business kind of needs to go and if you need mm. help along the way we're here uh, but we're not we don't need to be there every step of the way yeah good point I, I guess you know as you said a lot of it is fairly bespoke that you started with before and and starting from you know rather than saying you need this technology, I guess what I've seen the approach is starting with what's the problem you're trying to solve or yeah. or what's the issue you see and can we get a solution around it and then developing, you know, products from there. So, you know, let's talk specific products because, I mean, as much as you said, you're not a data scientist, you don't do so much as artificial intelligence, but, you know, I know some of the things that you've mentioned before, business intelligence and automation, um, even even intranets, that sort of thing. Let, let's talk specifics around that uh, and yep. how these apply to business owners. Yeah, I think kind of, um, so intranets are still kind of a big thing uh, these days to kind of be that central source of truth. Uh, so just, for, sorry, just yep, for, for, yeah. for the absolute layman? Yeah, sure. What's yep. an intranet? So an intranet is kind of like your own uh your own business website, but instead of kind of other people uh, from outside of your business kind of coming to look at your website to kind of know what your products and services are, this is for you and for your staff. Um, so it's kind of, yeah, it's just a website that's kind of only available to you and your staff. As far as what we use it for, uh, it can be a whole raft of different things, um, but the biggest one um, is, is really around that kind of knowledge management process. So 
for example, if you've got a new starter kind of landing within your company, if you're kind of sending them an email with kind of a whole bunch of, hey, here's some Chrome links that you can add into your bookmarks, here's the stuff we care about, and here's logins to this platform, and here's um, here's a PDF with, uh, with kind of a step-by-step -step process of what you need to do on, on your first day. Um, what we can do is kind of transport that all into kind of our intranet, and that becomes this kind of single source of truth for kind of knowledge within your company. And it can be become like a bit of a wiki. It can store all of your kind of your important documents as well. So like a controlled document management system with your policies, procedures, templates, and things like that. And it all becomes like not only easy to consume, but easy to search across as well and kind of just find what you're missing there. And if your answer to kind of like, oh, where's this is go to the internet and find it yourself instead of like all of this knowledge being captured within your kind of workers and people needing to be tapped on shoulders yeah, every well, other minute. Yeah. I guess it's it, it's just hearing that it's it's a you know like I work in corporate finance a lot so it's a great element of reducing that key person risk. Um, yeah. As you said, also I would imagine it it deals with you know um, obsolescence of you know precedents and documentation and that sort of thing and you know the old trick of someone going to a, another client's file or another customer's file and copying and pasting and this sort of thing. At least yeah. internet you're dealing with with current information. And and the final one to me that comes up in so many businesses that I work with is um, they need improvement around their communication. I imagine this would be a great communication tool. Yeah, exactly. So so definitely the, the easy one of kind of let's stop emailing kind of all staff emails um, and surfacing that through kind of news um, and announcements through SharePoint is another easy way to do that. Um, even if you don't use SharePoint, we can do a lot of that in Teams as well and kind of use Teams as a bit of a news and kind of announcements-driven platform as well if you're not necessarily using the rest of SharePoint. Um, but, yeah, just trying to reduce that kind of email spam that we we all get in our inboxes and go, if we try to kind of, yeah, reduce that from an internal perspective and try to leave our emails for more of that external correspondence uh, mm. as required can definitely just like help, help reduce that that kind of absolute carnage that we have to deal with day to day. Well, yeah, and from a business owner's point of view, if you, the more you can reduce out of someone's emails, we know it's one of the biggest distractions to productivity. You know, you would expect that you'd see, you know, an increase in, in, in performance as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, we've done a few studies as far as kind of even like um, carbon loaded studies to go, like how much does it cost for us to send an email out to thousands of people every day? Or how much time does it cost for us to do that, and how and people are having to delete it and or kind of skip through it, whereas like we can just deliver it on a platform. It's there if they want to read it. We try to try to get them interested and and to to make it in, like worth worth reading. Mm. Um, but if it, but if it's not, they kind of don't have to. Um, yeah, and so it's just kind of yeah, generally a really like a much better way than dropping emails into people's inboxes every day. I'm starting to uh, touch on ESG there. Yeah, what about so so that's intranets. What about you know um, automation? Let's talk automation. Yeah, so I guess like a lot of the automation stuff kind of comes with like form what we call like forms and workflows. So things that might might have been a word document or a piece of paper or a PDF a fillable PDF in the past, um, you might have kind of filled that in and kind of emailed it through to you. Uh, let's go with say like a payment request for example. Um, I've like. I've bought something on a work credit card or probably not a work credit card, but bought something we need to kind of pay for it. I fill in my form in, in Word and flick it through to my boss for approval. And then they kind of flick it through to finance for kind of payment. Things like that uh, kind of, again, we're just filling out people's inboxes. We end up with like multiple copies of like whatever this invoice is. It's sitting in people's like download folders. It's sitting in pe like multiple people's inboxes. And it's sitting with finance as well. A lot of, lot of people have rekeying information as well. So we've got kind of, somebody rekeying information out of the invoice into an email to say how much it costs, then the finance people are doing the same thing again back into their, their core finance platform. It's just a lot of kind of messy rework and kind of not really a great like audit uh, trail as well. We kind of go need to flip through emails to find that. So we have like some, some businesses, especially Australian government, that have like much more rigid requirements around that process, around kind of instigating delegations of authority for purchasing and kind of proving where the approval kind of happened. Um, so that's kind of a big part of, of kind of deliveries that we've done before to go, hey, let's let's digitize all of that where we have nice digital forms that are easy to fill in or even pre-fill based off kind of invoices that get uploaded. And let's kind of push that through workflows 
that kind of institute your policies around kind of delegations of authority for spending. And then let's do the final step as well and integrate it into the core finance platform so the finance people aren't re-keying information there as well. So again, not only do we get uh, like massive time savings through all of that across all of those people, uh, but we get a lot more accuracy as well. Uh, versus, so I guess, yeah, yeah. Just, just hearing you talk, it's, it's really, there's no doubt it's creating efficiency because we're getting rid of duplication. Um, I mean, we deal with probably risk because we don't miss steps. You know, as I said, it's automated. Um, it, it's accurate. Yep. Um, but it's also um, creating capacity because it's taken that, I guess, non-value adding where things are replicated so much, tasks from people's yeah. days and systemizing that and allowing people to then focus on areas they can add value that really make the difference. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've used that term um, like knowledge worker, I guess, to say like we've got these these like highly skilled people working within our organisation in finance capacities or management capacities um, and doing this stuff like shouldn't really be part of their day-to-day job. They shouldn't be re-keying information. It's, it's, it's low value work. Um, so let's get them doing more high value work by by kind of yeah instigating systems like this. Um, and yeah, a great example is yeah, we did have kind of a, one of these uh, purchase request platforms in place. Um, and within a two year period, we saw about half a year of kind of FTE saved. Um, uh, so yeah, like massive kind of return mm. on investment kind of within a really short period of time for platforms like that. Yeah, that, that's a great, great, um, you know, point to make especially for business owners that generally when they look at something like a project around technology be like oh geez is that how much it's going to cost but reality is it's then looking to go well hang on it's a it's a cost at the moment what's the lifetime value and what's your your return on investment i know you've just quoted something on that project but what else do we talk about when it comes to roi yeah, so I think kind of like there's a very tangible like return on investment that we would always try to um, either calculate ourselves like during kind of the initial um, kind of investigation into a project or we would get the kind of client's internal resources to kind of run that as well. Um, and, and that's just really usually like a time kind of standpoint, like what is the time saved from from implementing some of these processes? And that's usually by far the most tangible and measurable kind of benefit of implementing like a business process automation. Um, but there's other stuff as well. It's beyond time. And that that's really kind of comes into things like data accuracy as well, um, like all these mistakes that kind of happen um, and like us kind of hopefully getting rid of the most part of those. The other thing is just kind of like employee well-being as well. It's like nobody likes doing this stuff. So let's let's make people not have to do that. And yep. if they're looking at if, if we have um yeah, if we have kind of an employee or a potential employee looking at two different options for kind of like where they might want to work and option A has like a really nice automated kind of tool chain and it, it makes their life really easy and they can do the stuff that they like doing versus, hey, I have to spend two days a week just re-keying information in, in, in job B. Like I know I know which way I'd probably want to go. Yeah, and no, you know, like fortune. Unfortunately, we don't live in the world where you just do what you're told anymore. It's uh, <laughs> people are thinking for themselves, you know, so... What's going on there? But I mean, mate, then if we if we go far away, like another point you've just made, which relates to it, is, and I, I think as you just alluded to with employment, at the moment, Australia, I'm sure the rest of the world, but Australia particularly, we've got, you know, every business, if not every second business you speak to, have uh, got labour shortages or can't get good people, uh, can't get people full stop. I mean, we need to be looking at these sort of um, systemization and automation, et cetera, to alleviate um tasks uh, which effectively creates efficiency and therefore capacity you know which in turn i guess um, deals with some of that labor issue yeah so i think kind of again to go back to a term that i used before is that like force multiplier kind of thing it's like how do we how do we do more with kind of um with kind of less time associated with it whether it be because of yeah the inability for us to kind of employ people um or cost of labor um all of that kind of stuff combines uh, to go like this stuff. Uh, if, if a business is not doing this stuff and we still have like large administration teams that we need to kind of continually recruit for that are doing kind of um, those kind of low value tasks, like just translating data between two systems or, or kind of rekeying things. Um, yeah, like the their competitors are not going to be doing that and they're going to be chasing down automation and kind of, yeah, implementing kind of, 
ERP products for finance instead of like having 15 like zero accounts and 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 doing all of that stuff and eventually they'll get to a point where they can deliver products and services uh, that are potentially better but it'll cost them a lot less to kind of deliver as well so mm. um, yeah just from a competitive advantage standpoint it's kind of yeah you really do need to be on board yeah I, I guess it's just the, the you know understanding or even challenging you know the status quo and how you use technology just to, as you said, that I'll, I'll remember that term, force multiplier. But, you know, from a point of view of a, a business owner, that, you know, I don't think you have a choice not to approach what you can do with technology. And, and the final one I was going to say there on the specifics, I mean, I know you could talk a lot more about product specifics, but business intelligence, that is something you spend a fair bit of time and you've alluded to some already. Yeah, exactly. So we've seen kind of, um, yeah, big, big explosion of this in the last few years. So kind of um, prior to now, it's been, again, uh, similar to what, what we talked about with SharePoint, where it was just too expensive to kind of get up and running. Like we're talking about kind of, oh, we need data warehouses and we need to kind of get data in and out of these five systems and, and like who's doing that and how much is it going to cost and how long, how much does it cost to kind of uh, like continually keep it updated into the future. Um, and again, in the last couple of years, we've seen kind of like ac across the board, not just from like Microsoft and, and Google and Amazon, for example, but yeah, really good, easy to use tools that do a lot of this stuff for us and that are very cheap to run. Um, so from uh, we've also kind of seen businesses step out of the kind of the realms of Excel and, and go, hey, like I, I used to be doing all my reporting in Excel and it was kind of OK, like I could download my general ledger list from zero and I can download my projects uh, from my, my project management system and kind of smush them together once a month and, and that kind of worked for me. Um, but we see businesses kind of increasingly go, well, I only have accurate data once a month and it's like retrospectively for what happened last month and it's halfway through the next month when I get it. And they kind of go, yeah, maybe this isn't good enough anymore and I really would like to know how, how we're currently doing today. Mm. Uh, so that that's where kind of these these data warehousing and kind of business intelligence kind of solutions really come into play. And well, I think can, on, yeah. on that point, I talk to a lot of clients about you know, and you've just hit on the head your, your PL, your balance sheet, etc. You know, they're always looking backwards, and, and and don't be wrong, they are very important. They're a yardstick for how we're going, but um, we need to look at the drivers of a business. And sometimes those drives of a business, like generally around um, customers or marketing and um, your people, and also your process and systems. You know, generally, they're not that easy to to grab and just see how they're tracking. They're they're sometimes not always quantitative. They're a lot of it's qualitative. You know, but but that's the part you're talking about. You can pull things from different areas and bring together a nice little snapshot. Yeah, like where where potentially you might have spent kind of a day or more kind of pulling together data from all of your disparate systems, whether like your HR platform and your project management platform and your finance platform, and kind of trying to make sense of all of that. Um, what we can do is basically do all of that every day for you, make make sure the data the data is kind of there and accurate, which is a huge part as well, um, versus kind of the the Excel smushing that kind of has, has been done in the past. Um, like plenty of Excel gurus out there that are really, really good at that, but there's also uh, ones that are maybe kind of like missed the mark a little bit there. Um, but well, like and, and, and there, ultimately, yeah. ultimately the, the people that's got to um, have under, who's got to understand it and, and, have got to be appeased them are the business owners that are making decisions. So, you know, the the more, I guess, decision making friendly we can make things and and some of that is just how it looks aesthetically and that sort of stuff, um, the better. Yeah, definitely kind of moving away, like from moving away from just like sheets of data, which can be very important um, uh, to to particular people, but to go what what are what are the like, I guess to use the term like KPIs, like are a big one. But there are other kind of just like identifiers of information that kind of like, what do I care about? Is there just a number that I need to kind of track just for me as a salesperson or as a, a, a tech kind of person or as a finance person? Like what's what's important to me day to day that and if I don't have to kind of go and find a report and download it and, and kind of process that to find that out. And that's just looking at me day to day that can really help kind of drive some of the decisions that I make day to day on, on potentially what I do or how I'm delivering it, or do I need to chase this now or it's, it's fine not to chase until next week. Um, so just, yeah, trying to deliver people the information that they care about very, very easily and knowing that it's, it's a hundred percent accurate, I think is mm. kind of a, a huge part of kind of what, what, where we're trying to deliver at the moment. Yeah, yeah. sure. Sure. 
So, I mean, all of this, I mean, I know, again, you could talk, I know you do a lot more on the product space and service and we could talk, but I think it's good just to capture some some common things that, you know, business owners are looking at. And that gives me a good segue into saying, well, it sounds, you know, like a lot of work and big fees and that sort of stuff, even though we yep. just talked about how inexpensive tech is. Um, and I think I want to get across that it's not just for the big end of town, is it? Like th- th- there's business of all shapes and sizes exploring these paths. Yeah, like 100%. Where, where in the past, again, you might look at, say, like we don't really kind of work with businesses less than like 50 to 80 kind of people. Um, these days, it's it's kind of everybody. And, and we can definitely, like we see tailored solutions that kind of fit like each size of, of business. Um, like our smallest client is a sole trader um, and done an absolute bucket load of work there to kind of make his business like incredibly efficient and automated to a point where he doesn't need to necessarily employ more staff to manage that yeah yeah right Mm. i I think that's a good one because it'd be just people just sitting there going yeah but it doesn't apply to me um so so i mean we said before and i don't want to spend too much time but the customer journey like at the end of the day you're sitting with people around problems you know and how we get improvement as opposed to you know them coming to you with specifics of what they need yep yep so you get a mix of everything so i guess um yeah we do have clients that kind of have heard about us and kind of just come to go hey like we're just interested to know more about this space and with the knowledge that you you will hopefully provide we might know kind of where it's going to help our business um and you have other clients that kind of have very specific needs to go we need one of these um and and how can you help us kind of achieve um solve this problem um, but I think, yeah, always it's about kind of going in there and not going in with a, like, here's a product list and we're going to deliver option B today kind of thing. Um, everything that we do is very much kind of built for the business and it's different for every business. It's even simple kind of like workflows and stuff vary wildly across uh, kind of across the how, how businesses like them to work. So I think it's it's kind of getting knowledge on, yeah, like how does that business work? What's going to be like the most efficient way for them for them to solve the problems that they have? Um, and also kind of, yeah, trying to unwind them from potential, like, yeah, we don't need to kind of go down like a technology platform kind of selection or anything like that uh, immediately. It's, yeah, sure. it's more more about that yeah, identification of what is what is the root problem. Do more of that, I guess, like business analysis piece. Or um, so, yeah. If, if if they've got kind of on staff business analysts and things like that, working with them very closely as well to try to identify um, what the problems are and making sure that like whatever we implement is not just solving yeah that problem, but kind of setting them up to kind of solve like those those problems for themselves or with our assistance kind of into the future. And, yeah. and I guess that's a good point of saying it's not just the problems they're facing now or they have faced, but it's also starting to think ahead and what they could face with with the changing environment and, and, and future. Yeah, definitely. You can't just basically, yeah, throw something over the fence to kind of solve their immediate problem and think that kind of job done. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be more than that into the future. Uh, like one one digital form and workflow could turn into 50 um business intelligence kind of a, a, a first pass on that could be solving like one set of kind of problems like uh like financial based reporting problems but we we probably need to move into yeah as you mentioned kind of like employee focused statistics and things like that as well so making sure that these solutions are kind of going to be around for for years to come and it's going mm. to support support their business and not kind of require again like costly reworks or or anything like that yeah, so it's. I mean, it makes sense, and it's such a big part of you know strategic planning these days. It probably wasn't you know years ago, but now it's it's such a key part of anything you want to deliver in your business. So it's a good point, mate. That's great. But a few questions for you: uh, biggest mistake and or lesson that you've had in your uh, career? I think probably the the biggest mistake was was probably not doing what I've mentioned before and kind of going in. Uh, going in with clients with kind of some technology deliveries to go, hey, this this is a this is a product that's going to that we've been told will kind of solve all your problems. Um, and yeah, like uh, so Microsoft have recommended this this product to us and they say, yeah, this is this is what it's good for. And, and us kind of going that path down that pathway and going, no, it's actually kind of really undercooked and and we're really kind of not going to actually be able to deliver uh, like a really long-term viable solution. So ending up kind of getting halfway through a project and realise, yeah, we could potentially solve this problem, but it's just not going to work kind of five years from now and mm. needing to kind of unwind it and go, all right, let's 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 do it a different approach now. So I think kind of uh, like due diligence on kind of like technology selection and stuff like that, um, 
very technical behind the scenes stuff and ultimately might not be very important, kind of uh, like not very visible, I guess, to a business owner. But for us, they're the big decisions that we need to make so that we can we can be very confident in engaging with businesses and telling them that the, this solution is going to be really good, not just next week, but yeah, five years from now. Yeah. Not to, not just believe in the, uh, the vendor, eh? No. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and in line with that, best advice ever received? Um, I think best advice is, is really, I think, kind of down to um, like respecting the spend and, and kind of going, hey, like if we're implementing a, a solution that might cost like twenty or $30,000, it's kind of equivalent to the, the client going and buying a vehicle or something for their fleet. And it's like, are you providing that level of service to, to, that, to that client? And, and I think kind of just being yeah incredibly respectful of kind of their their trust in you to kind of deliver this kind of uh, this kind of services that requires so much trust to kind of yeah go down this pathway, and, and just making sure that we're kind of absolutely like killing it on the delivery front, and and making sure that everybody's in a very happy state kind of down and going forwards. I think so. Yeah, very much that I think is is probably the best advice yeah, I've mate. ever received. Yeah, I, I love that one. I say to my team all the time. It's 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 it's, it's great in professional services that you know how you spend in the client's money. Uh, yeah. because I think you've just nailed it. Like sometimes we can get lost in timesheets and, you know, work in progress amounts and this sort of stuff that it loses that um, realness, that reality, you know, mm -hmm. where at the end of the day you sit there and go, would you spend that? You know, like it's yeah. a very, very good point. But um, man, that's great. I might just wrap up a few things. Um, you know, I think when people need to look at technology, they need to sit there and go, look, everything's bespoke, but it is all about, innovation and how we can improve and do things better um you know what is ai we said that's not necessarily your it's, it's such a far-reaching tool but you know i, I think you, you know a part of it pretty well we're saying look it's it's not replacing people per se but it's, it's replacing particular tasks from people that are um not as efficient and where we're replicating a lot using technology and that sort of thing to, to make um, you know better outcomes yeah um Seek the appropriate advice. I think we've we, it's been very clear whether you're talking about you know something bespoke that you're talking about or Microsoft Copilot or even Chat GPT. You know, make sure you're talking to people that probably know a bit more than um, you know yeah. around what we should be and shouldn't be doing. So, and that's good for anything. Seek counsel. Uh, I think with that, always be conscious of when you're using sort of bots or or things like um, Chat GPT, and that you still need a level of quality assurance. So it'll help you with the efficiency of writing, for 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 example, but What's the output? Is it is it, I guess, factually correct? And you know, I know one of the mistakes always comes up. It might be pulling on wrong dates because it hasn't been updated and that sort of thing. So, yeah. um, QA, um, the tech has just continually gotten better over the years, and it continues to do so. And and even better, it's cheaper. It's quite you know, inexpensive compared to, what, as you said, when you started. So, um, I think from a business owner's point of view, you just cannot not afford to be looking at technology and how you can use it better. Um, some of the key tools that you use with a lot of SMEs, uh, intranets, great for communication and efficiency and one source of truth, et cetera. Automation of processes, I love that one. Anything where we're duplicating or replicating, you know, the, the low value stuff, um, how can we, you know, automate that and, and, and make better use of our people? Um, and business intelligence, you know, a lot more information for making better decisions, um, you know, understanding what's driving your business, how we're getting to a certain place. And I think you, you, the good point you're there, you can back that up with return on investment, employee well-being, and also deal with that whole labour issue and creating capacity and efficiencies in your business. Um, we need to challenge the status quo. My, my takeout from today, force multiplier. It sounds like something out of Star yep. Wars, mate. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, looking at how we can do more with less by using tech. I think it was a great point. Um, and just asking the question. You know, uh, it may be that we can't do better, but unless we're looking at it as a business owner, you could be on the back foot. Um, I think the key thing that we got towards the end there, a lot of people thinking this is for big business, but it's not. As you said, great example, I'm doing it with sole traders. So it's for all size businesses and it doesn't need to be, you know, a big, expensive, time-saking task if we put our heads around it and understand what the outcome is and how we're going to get there. A couple of cool things that you said around, um, you know, advice and that sort of thing around doing due diligence on on technology options i mean that's what what you said was a lesson for you and you make sure you do but i think that's a good one for business owners as well and i love that final point you said about respecting the spend and you know, it should be tattooed on all professional advisors uh 
<laughs> eyelids, yeah. but you know, like it's not, yeah. it doesn't often, it doesn't often uh, play out that way. So, mate, there's some great tips there. Um, if anyone wants to check it out, what's the website? Uh, vinet, V I N E T dot com dot A U. Beautiful, mate. Great, great session. It's such a, uh, a developing and comprehensive topic to get your head around. But I think the key thing you said, it's just asking the question as a business owner and how can we maybe achieve something a bit better using technology. Mate, thanks for joining me on Down to Business. Cool. And Too easy, Bates. Yeah. Till next time. Cheers. Yeah.